Hey guys, Brad with Family Handyman. We just finished up building this really cool wood-fired oven. Granted, it's an advanced DIY project, but don't be afraid to try it. Let me show you how we built it. Build a form for the concrete pad using 2x10s. Our pad is 8 inches thick, so we spread class 5 gravel in the form, leaving 8 inches to the top of the form. Tamp down the base to compact it. Make sure your form is braced and sloped to shed water. Pour concrete mix into the form and then screed off the top. Once the concrete begins to set, trowel the surface and tool the edges. Allow the concrete to cure for a day before removing the form. Build a form for the capstone using melamine. Apply a bead of silicone at the bottom corners of the form. Once the silicone is dry, fill in the form with lightweight countertop concrete mix. We used fiberglass rebar here to keep the weight down and avoid rust stains. We set the rebar grid and then pressed it into the concrete. When the concrete begins to harden, trowel the surface and tool the corners. The capstone is only three inches thick, so we allowed it to cure for several days before removing the form. All right, so we've got our capstone and our slab poured today, and now we just have to wait for those to cure, and when they're cured, We'll set the concrete block on the slab and set the capstone on the concrete block. So our slab is set and we're gonna start laying concrete block on it today to build the base for our pizza oven. And we're not gonna mortar the blocks together. We're gonna use landscape adhesive instead because the look of the blocks doesn't matter in this case because we're veneering the exterior with cultured stone. Lay out the outline of the base on the pad and set the first course of concrete blocks. Because our pad is sloped, we set the first course of block in mortar. That way we could build up the back enough to make our base level. Set the rest of the block for the base using landscape adhesive. This is much easier and faster than using mortar. Pay close attention to keeping the whole thing square, plumb, and level as you build. When the adhesive is dry, fill all the cores of the block with concrete mix and rebar. Before setting our first course of blocks, we drilled the pad for rebar. This way, after filling the cores, the base is firmly attached to the pad. Remove the form from the capstone. Clean off any leftover silicone and smooth any sharp edges with a rub block. Apply landscape adhesive to the top of the base and then set the capstone in place. This thing is very heavy, so find a few friends to help you. Set bricks around the perimeter of the capstone using a grout bag to apply the mortar. We didn't want the hollow sides of the bricks to show, so we cut ends off extra bricks to cover the hollow faces. Let the mortar cure for 24 hours. To bring the fire bricks up to the height of the perimeter bricks, we set them on a thick bed floor mix mortar. We set PVC pipe in place to screed the mortar to the height we wanted. Set the fire bricks in place using refractory mortar to bring them to final level on top of the floor mix base. Use a level or straight edge to keep them flush with the tops of the perimeter bricks. Traditionally, mortar isn't used between the fire bricks in the oven base. Cut the ends for the arch form. These can be made from any scrap plywood or MDF. Connect the arches using straight 2x4s and construction screws. Don't glue the form together. You want it to be easy to take apart later. Apply the tempered hardboard skin to the arch framework using roofing nails. Cut a large hole in the center of each arch. This makes removing the form much easier. 
Center the arch form on the oven base and start setting the fire brick from both sides of the form. Figure the mortar joints as you go, working it out to avoid cutting any bricks. Use refractory mortar to set the fire bricks. Continue working up the arch, staggering the fire brick joints on each consecutive course. After setting all the fire bricks, we applied a parge coat of mortar to the whole arch. It's just a thin coat of mortar which gives a smooth, continuous surface to apply the outer bricks. We left the fire bricks in the flue area loose for the time being. Add the outer brick veneer once the mortar sets on the fire brick arch. We applied mortar to each brick and filled in where needed using a grout bag. Once the mortar begins to set, tool the mortar joints. Cut out an area in the two top front fire bricks to accommodate the flue opening. Set those fire bricks and then mortar the flue in place. When the mortar is firm, continue setting the remaining outer bricks, cutting them to fit around the flue. Let the arch cure for a day or two then carefully remove the arch form. Start by unscrewing the ends, then, as gently as possible, pull the ribs free of the hardboard. Avoid any prying or pounding. You don't want to cause any cracks in the mortar. Fill in the back of the oven with fire brick, followed by a parge coat. Cover the back using slices of the outer brick mortared to the parge coat. Fill in the joints using a grout bag. We used brick slices to veneer the flue. We staggered the corner joints and filled in mortar around the flue as we built up the veneer. At the top, we capped the bricks with a coat of mortar sloped to shed water. You can skip veneering the flue if you like. All right, so we're ready to veneer the concrete block. And to do that, we're gonna use this uh, man-made cultured stone that matches the rest of the homeowner's patio. And Instead of using mortar to apply the stone, we're gonna use landscape adhesive, and it'll go a lot faster. We started on the inside and wrapped around the front corner, then worked around the whole base. I used cardboard shims to hold the stone up off the slab for water drainage. Continue applying the cultured stone all the way around and back inside, working your way up. At the corners and the top, you'll need to trim the stones, but they're easy to cut using a diamond wheel on an angle grinder. All right, so our oven's all finished up. The next thing we need to do is have a few low temperature fires in here to get this thing cured, and then we're ready to start baking. For more cool projects like this, visit us at familyhandyman.com.